Shalom. Trust we are well in the presence of the Lord this day. We welcome you to the Sunday celebration service of Crisco City Church, where we are this morning in Kitisuru. The Lord bless you as you join us as we move on ahead together. And especially those of us who are watching us through the uh, broadcast, feel at the feet of Jesus Christ as we continue through the service today. Crisco City Church is based in Kitisuru area of Nairobi. Uh, the most common road known to this place is Peponi Road. And so you are welcome to join us as the Lord enables you. We have quite a number of activities in the course of the week. We normally have morning glories through our WhatsApp group. We have evening prayer meetings on Tuesday and on Friday and Monday evening. We have a Bible study at the moment. We are going through the book of Hebrews and in a few weeks we shall be through and go forth to another book. So we welcome, welcome you to join us and fellowship with us and worship the Lord with us because we believe that we should introduce each one of us to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That we may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering so welcome to Crisco city church where we enjoy the presence of the living god and our senior pastor our presbyter is uh presbyter walter naftali wajiambo our pastor is pastor grace wajiambo and we thank god that they give us opportunity as members of the church to express the giftings and the talents that God has given unto us. As you continue watching the broadcasts and as you continue coming to church, then you will be able to enjoy more of their ministry, more of their services. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So look at your neighbor and just tell them, welcome into the house of the Lord. And tell them, feel at the feet of Jesus. And enjoy his manifest presence today. Tell them, God is here to meet you at your very point of need. Open your heart to him. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to pray and just begin our service today. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we adore you. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together, to call upon your name, to bless you, to honor you, to worship you, and just be transformed in your presence. We commit this service into your able hands. Have your waking of glory. Lead us, guide us every step of the way. May we see you in a way we've not seen you before. And that, Lord, our God, we shall... Um, as we leave this place, we shall not be the same ever again. Each of us will look back and say, indeed, I have been in the presence of the living God and my life has been transformed. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We commit the worship session into your able hands. We commit the ministry of your word into your able hands. Father, our hearts are open. We are expectant. We thank you for an open heaven that you shall minister to us in a very special way. Even them that are watching us through television and through other uh, uh, social media spaces. Lord, won't you touch them and minister to them in a very special way as you minister to us in person, King of glory. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. The name of the Lord is a strong tower.
King of glory in, by, uh, for inhabiting in our praises and worship this morning. Thank you, King of glory, for being in our midst this morning. Thank you, King of glory, because you have great things in store for us, O oh Lord. We are open to you, O Lord. Have come and have your way, O Lord, in our lives. Minister to us, O God. We are expectant to receive from you, dear Master. We thank you, King of glory, because you are a faithful God. And we have prayed this, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank the Lord for such a wonderful time we have had in his presence. I request you to be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, praise and worship. You may have your seats too. Welcome to today's service once again. Feel at the feet of Jesus. And God is ready to minister to us. So I would want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of us and feel that God is here with us and is going to minister to you at your point of need. As you've come, I believe you are expectant. 
And uh, also this moment, I want to welcome the Minister of the Salmon um, uh, this morning, who is other than our elder, Joseph Yishuru. I welcome you to this service once again. Uh, those of you who are uh, following us from uh, Revival TV and other media, you're very much welcome. Those who are here in person, you are very much welcome. We are happy to see all of you. And uh, the Lord is continuing to speak to us on the issue of divine alignment, even as uh, we were read by our presbyter uh, at the beginning of this year. And there are so many areas of our life that we need to get aligned. So, each and every time we stand here, we'll be talking about divine alignment. And uh, we'll tackle many areas, and uh, we trust God that by the end of this year, we'll be able to see a lot of alignment in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, uh, we're going to talk about entitlement. Uh, and uh, uh, as I look at entitlement, uh, the title I've given uh, our, top, uh, our ministry today is Entitlement, the Enemy of Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, to begin with, uh, we can try to understand this word entitlement. And uh, uh, one of the definitions is that uh, is the fact of having a light to something. You feel you have a light to something. Which is okay, because uh, there are certain things we have a right to, and uh, uh, when we have done something, there is a genuine expectation, let's say if you have worked, that you'll be paid for it. You have a right to a salary. But uh, uh, if you look at the dictionary, there's also another definition that uh, talks about the belief that one is inherently deserving of privileges. So it is a belief or it's a perception that you have a right uh, and uh, you deserve some privilege or special treatment. And uh, uh, in this country, uh, we have quite a lot of it. In Kiswahili, they say hakietu. And uh, you hear people everywhere saying hakietu, eh? uh, or my right in English. And uh, uh, this comes when we see a need or a desire as a right. And uh, though it may not really be a right, we see it as a right. And uh, uh, one good example is the matatos on, on the road. Eh? Uh, their, their need uh, to get as many passengers make them feel that they have uh, the right of way, they have priority on the road. So it's like when you are on the road together with them, you don't have a right, they want to push you out. But because their desire uh, or their need makes them feel like they are the only ones who have the right. Yet we all have the right to the road. And uh, there are many situations where you find uh, people are thinking that they actually uh, desire, uh, deserve to be given priority even when they don't deserve. And uh, uh, we've talked about uh, uh, having the right to something or an entitlement because you've done something and also because it is uh, a perception, but both of them are not okay. You might think the first one is okay, but the second one is not okay, but there are issues even in the first one. And uh, uh, that's why uh, even from the scriptures that uh, we have used for the year, uh, Romans uh, 12, verse 1 and 2, uh, God would want us 
uh, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Maybe you can read verse 2 and 3. Romans chapter 2, uh, 12, sorry, verse 2 and 3. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one uh, a measure of faith. So, uh, Paul here is telling us to be transformed, that we uh, can uh, think of ourselves uh, soberly. We can make light judgment uh, about ourselves, not to be thinking that uh, we deserve so much even when we don't deserve and uh, through transformation, then we are able to look at ourselves more accurately. Uh, that uh, we do not see that uh, we deserve even more than we deserve. And uh, uh, for uh, the, the Christian life, uh, one of the things that you realize is that there are many things that we have but we do not deserve. As I look at my life, I look at even what position I have, even at the office, uh, even in church, I don't deserve. It's not a light. I'm not entitled to this. It is just by the grace of God that I am where I am. And that's why even as elders are ministering to you every week, they will tell you, I'm an elder by the grace of God. Uh, it is not that they deserve, it is not an entitlement. But uh, we know that there are people who look at uh, these things and uh, they see it is an entitlement. I am here because I am like this, or I have this education, or I am connected with this person. So you, they take it as an entitlement. And uh, if we look at uh, this, the two kinds of entitlement that uh, I have talked about, uh, the first one being the one where you are looking at the contribution that you have made or the work that you have put in, uh, you can see uh, uh, the example that uh, Jesus gave in the book of Luke, chapter 12. If you could turn there, we'll read verse 16 uh, to uh, 20. Uh, this talks about uh, the parable of the rich fool. Uh, let's read from verse 16. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my clothes? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my clubs and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required uh, of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Uh, Jesus, when he was giving this example, uh, was talking about uh, uh, us when we get wealth, that uh, we should be rich towards God. But uh, uh, one other thing I also see is that uh, uh, Jesus was also trying to say that we should not see that we are entitled to the things that we have obtained as a result of our work. This man, uh, he uh, worked on the ground and uh, he got a lot of youths. Uh, and he had 
more than he could store. So I believe that uh, it came out of hard work. And uh, he could have said, I have a light to this. And that's what he, he thought. That now he can uh, just relax, take it easy, and uh, be merry and enjoy himself. Uh, but then he was told, you are a fool. Uh, uh, you do not recognize who has given you all this. Eh? Uh, so he was told, this night your soul will be required of you. And uh, uh, what uh, God is requiring us to see, that even when we have worked on uh, something, uh, you have worked the whole month, you have uh, sold your goods, you have planted, you have harvested, it is God who has made it happen for you. Uh, David was uh, very good in this. Uh, he acknowledged that leashes and honor come from God. He said all things come from the heart of God. And so he is the same one who will allow us to enjoy. If this man, after doing all this and uh, harvesting more than he could even store, uh, appreciated that all this has come from your heart, Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you have given me. I appreciate you. Lead me and guide me on how I can use this for your own glory and honor. That man uh, would uh, uh, have been counted righteous before God. But he took it that it was his right. It was his entitlement. He had worked for it. And now he had every right to enjoy. Only for him to realize that uh, uh, he could not enjoy. And uh, uh, the way that uh, we also need to appreciate is that there are many who work for things. And even when they work, they don't get. You know very well there are people who are, have worked in organizations. The organizations have cash flow issues. And you have worked for five months. You've not been paid. It was your right, but you've not been paid. There are people who have supplied uh, goods to supermarkets here in Kenya. You know of a number of them that have collapsed. And uh, you went even and borrowed money and you supplied, but you, do not, you did not receive a penny. And when you now realize that uh, you can do it and not even get the return, then if, when, when you get it, you appreciate. You take it that this is not an entitlement. It is just by grace that I'm receiving this. Even though I have worked, it is God who has caused this to come to me. So one thing that I want us to appreciate is that there is no absolute entitlement. That he niangu niangu, that this is mine, it's mine. There is no absolute entitlement. And once you put it in your mind that uh, when you work or when you do something that it is your absolute right to get it, you will get disappointed. Because there are many times you'll do it and you'll not receive. And so we need to hold on to things loosely. Yeah, that uh, yes, I have done my part, but I'm trusting in God. Yes, I will not be lazy and do nothing. I will work. But the main thing that I will do is to trust in God and to serve God. And uh, that's why the word of God tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 8, in every situation, be thankful and continuously give thanks to God, for this is the will uh, of God for you in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks. So even what you have earned out of your sweat, give thanks. God would want us to give him thanks for each and everything uh, uh, because this is his will uh, concerning us. Uh, the second uh, entitlement that I had talked about was the one that is unwarranted 
or having unwarranted expectation. And uh, uh, so you have the mind that you are entitled uh, to get something. Yet, in the real sense, you may not be entitled. And uh, I want us to look at the book of Second Kings, chapter 5. Second Kings, chapter 5. Uh, in any Bible scholar will know when you go there who you are talking about. Talking about Naaman. Eh? Uh, Naaman uh, was a commander of the army of uh, the king of Syria and he was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. Uh, he was also a mighty man of Pharaoh but a leper. So that's what you see in uh, verse 1 of uh, chapter 5 uh, of uh, Second King. But I was, uh, want us to look at uh, uh, verse 10 to 12. Verse 10 to 12. Uh, let's read. Uh, so uh, what happened was that uh, because he was a rapper, he went uh, uh, to get hearing after getting uh, advice from his servant girl that there is a prophet in uh, Israel uh, who would help him get healing. So he went now uh, to the prophet. And uh, the prophet uh, 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 ministered to him. But uh, let's see how the ministry was uh, from uh, verse 10, sorry. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and uh, your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious. I went away and said, Indeed, I say to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. I'll not the Abana and the Papa the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Islam? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. So this was his reaction because he had certain expectations. He, had, he thought he was entitled to particular treatment. As the commander of the army of uh, Syria, and uh, who had brought a lot of uh, victory uh, to Syria, and who was honored by his master, he expected that this prophet would deal with him personally, not said a servant. And uh, so that was one thing that really annoyed him. And then uh, he also expected the prophet would come and uh, do some... Uh, dramatic things, eh? uh, and uh, he will get his hearing. And we also get uh, in, caught up in this, eh? that uh, uh, when we are told to do simple things, uh, we don't like it. Uh, we feel we deserve better. And uh, Naaman f felt he deserves better, even when uh, we are asking people to come for prayer. Maybe you feel... I need the presbyter to pray for me. Eh? And to lay hands on me. Eh? Not uh, uh, Brother Koesh. Eh? <laughs> you want somebody of rank eh? to deal with you personally and to do something that shows that, uh, yes, uh, uh, he is taking this very seriously, uh, the way in your own eyes, eh? And uh, that's how uh, we miss, by having this sense of entitlement. Even for the rivers, he was saying in the, his country, there were better rivers. Uh, I think maybe Jordan was, I have not seen the Jordan, but maybe it's a dirty river. Uh, or maybe it, it was uh, during the floods and uh, it was quite dirty. Uh, so he was thinking they have better rivers. 
uh, surely the prophet would have said that he goes to those rivers. So having the sense of entitlement makes us miss God's blessing because we are looking uh, to be treated in particular ways. And you may say, I'm not like Naaman. Uh, whatever the servant of God say, I will do. But uh, it happens in every area of our lives. Even uh, at home, the husband, the wife, there are certain ways you expect to be treated. I expected that when I come home, she will leave everything she's doing and come and meet me at the door. <laughs> but uh, that might not happen. Eh? <laughs> yeah? Uh, I expected her to serve me. I expected that my husband would do this for me uh, uh, for the birthday. You know? <laughs> and uh, whatever he did, you don't appreciate because you had your own expectation. And so you might be thinking, I'm not like Naaman, but you can reflect on your lives and uh, see, are there areas when uh, you feel disappointed because of the way people have treated you, when you felt you are entitled to better? And uh, as I have said, uh, when you realize that there are some who are working so hard and they are not even getting it, uh, wives who are treating their husbands like kings and all they get is a beating, <laughs> then that's when you realize even the kind of treatment you are receiving is still good. And uh, uh, when you realize that there's nothing guaranteed, there's no absolute entitlement, you are able to thank God. Whatever it is, yeah? Even if uh, it is uh, 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 a treatment that might not uh, reach the level that you expect, eh, you will still be able to thank God. I have said that entitlement is the enemy to thanksgiving. Because if you do not appreciate that person for what they have done because you feel you are entitled to more, are you going to thank God for them? Even when you pray, will you be saying, thank God for my wife, thank for God for my husband, thank you for what he has done? Will you do that? You won't. Because you feel you did not get what you expected. But when you remove entitlement mentality from yourself, you are able to the, obey the word of God that uh, we have read in uh, First Thessalonians 5.18 to give thanks to God in each and every situation because this is uh, 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 God's uh, will for us in Christ Jesus. And so, even uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, children, uh, children have a lot of, they have that sense of entitlement that my parents should pay fees, they should buy me these things, but uh, you just need to look around and see children who have been left uh, without these things. Maybe they were even uh, cleverer than you and uh, they ever went to school. Not because their parents did not have money, but their parents did not uh, uh, prioritize this. Uh, maybe uh, parents could be in uh, uh, alcohol and other vices that they don't even do what they are supposed to do. Sometimes you even pay school fees for a relative and uh, you never even get thanks that uh, you have paid those fees. They feel it's an entitlement. And so uh, in this country and across the world, there's a lot of entitlement. And entitlement is not godly. Uh, we need to align ourselves uh, uh, to what God wants us to see, that whatever we get, we appreciate it. We are thankful to God because there is no absolute entitlement. So let's quickly look at uh, benefits of uh, disregarding entitlement and uh, living a life of thanksgiving. Because 
uh, as we have said, uh, when you do not consider it an entitlement, it is uh, uh, very easy for you to give thanks to God. Number one, it strengthens relationship with people and with God. So, with people, I'm sure all of you who are seated here, you want somebody to say thank you. Even for your children, when you have done uh, what uh, uh, you really need to do, you, you feel good when they say thank you. You should not expect it that uh, you get the thanks, uh, but when you get it, it strengthens the relationship. Uh, if you have several children and uh, some of them always say thank you, you find that you are connecting better with the ones who say thanks. Uh, even in business, uh, you go and buy things and uh, uh, the trader tells you thank you. You feel good and you want to go there the next time. Uh, I was just visualizing uh, my barber. When he comes to shave me, uh, he says a lot of things, even too much. Eh? <laughs> and uh, for me, I actually feel so guilty going to another barber. Yes, he's a good one, and uh, he does a good job. But because of his thanksgiving attitude, I find it very hard to move elsewhere because I'm connected with him. So when uh, we don't have that entitlement attitude, then we develop better relationships with people. So you find that uh, you, because, uh, yes, he'll come, I'll pay him, but he doesn't feel he's entitled to that. He says, thank you, thank you for supporting me. God bless you, you know? And uh, so you want to support him more because he has a thanksgiving mentality. He does not have an entitlement mentality. And I want us to uh, leave that uh, uh, mentality of entitlement and embrace the mentality of thanksgiving. And we will form better relationship with people. And then we will also form better relationships with God. Because God has already told us that we should give him thanks for each and every situation. And... Uh, uh, it is not only the good things that we give thanks to God for. God has told us to give him thanks for each and every situation. And uh, 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 even when things are not okay, uh, as a, 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 a person who has been called of God, is to tell God, uh, thank you God for this situation. I know you are working in this situation. I don't have the fees, but I give you thanks because I know you're working in this situation. And when you give thanks, even when you don't have, even when the situation is not okay, this is when you release the power of God and he comes and works in that situation. And so that word that we have read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it is true for Every situation, give thanks. And I remember uh, 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 reading a book, uh, I think, Prison to Praise. Maybe I may have talked about it some time back. That uh, there was a chaplain, and uh, the soldiers would go to him with a lot of problems. And he would tell them, let's give thanks. Let's give thanks. Uh, your wife has filed a divorce. Let's give thanks. And... Uh, the soldiers will wonder, what's wrong with this guy? I'm giving thanks and I'm losing my marriage. But as they would be giving thanks, the Lord uh, would work in those situations and they would, be, uh, uh, they would be surprised because the situation that was so bad is transformed completely and it is a completely different situation in the positive side just because they gave the, they gave thanks. So let's get into this habit of giving thanks to God uh, for each and every situation. Our relationship with God will grow and uh, we will receive more from God. Number two, 
it produces godly leaders. Uh, I think uh, we were looking at the book of Nehemiah and we were looking at leadership. And uh, uh, leadership in this country is what leadership should not be. <laughs> because uh, we see that people are getting into leadership uh, with the interest of uh, just getting the benefits of leadership. And that's why, especially for some positions in government, when you get into that office, the first thing is to change the furniture, the carpet, even uh, because these days they have TV sets, you get another TV sets. You change everything, yet whatever was there could have even taken you the full term because you have that entitlement mentality. Yet, uh, that uh, uh, money that is spent on this wasteful expenditure could have been spent uh, for something else. Uh, and uh, sometimes you find somebody is going to a parastatal that is even in debt and they dig the hole deeper by doing those things. Eh? Yet they are supposed to come in and realize there is a problem here uh, can we conserve all the resources and uh, get this organization to move in a new direction? And uh, uh, we, uh, I think our elder uh, Eliakim was talking to us last Sunday about uh, Nehemiah, that uh, he did not, uh, uh, he did not uh, take the, whatever was his entitlement, but maybe we can remind ourselves in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, uh, verse 14 uh, to 15. Nehemiah, chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Verse 14. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year until the 32nd year of King Atexis, 12 years, Neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's prov provisions, but the former governors who were before me laid burden on the people and took from them bread and wine beside 40 she shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. So we see here a governor who did not take advantage of his position. Uh, uh, he had entitlement, but because of the fear of God, he did not take that entitlement. He put the people first. And even as we pray for leaders in this nation, can we pray that we get such leaders? Leaders uh, who would think about the pride of the people. They will not think about themselves first but they will think about the people. Nehemiah did not want to put a big burden on the people. He wanted to ease the burden. Even his servants, he showed them that they should not lord over the people. They should not acquire land. They should not uh, take advantage of their position. And uh, this should be our cry this year, even as we pray for readers, that uh, we will get godly leaders. Uh, leaders who will not have an entitlement mentality, that uh, they uh, will seek to do what pleases God, because Nehemiah sought to do what pleased God. Even uh, uh, for the ministry, uh, you would look at somebody like Paul. Paul sought not to burden the people, and uh, he worked uh, in order to provide uh, uh, for uh, his needs. And uh, when you look at the book of uh, uh, Second Thessalonians, chapter 3, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, we can read verse 8 to 9, uh, he, we see the same story. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, 
but uh, worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. Not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. So even in ministry, it's not only in the parties or uh, in kingship that uh, this example is being given. Uh, so we see the same in Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8 to 9. And actually in the epistles, you see Paul really talking about this, how he did not take advantage, even though he was supposed to receive uh, from the ministry, he would spend a lot of time working so that he would not be a burden to them, that he would preach, uh, preach the gospel uh, for no cost. And so, even as uh, we are ministers of God, uh, I would pray that we also follow the example of Paul, that uh, we will not uh, uh, have that sense of entitlement. That, uh, yes, uh, we have some light, but as we said, there's no absolute entitlement. Uh, there's a way uh, that uh, we can also seek to provide uh, for ourselves so that uh, it's not like uh, uh, it's our right, you know, to carry the whole offering bag and go and do whatever I want, you know. Uh, it should not be. Uh, that's not what godly uh, leaders should be. And uh, uh, we are talking about being divinely aligned, that we will be godly in the way that we walk. And uh, uh, number three, it produces godly servants or workers. So we've talked about leaders, uh, but uh, uh, disregarding entitlement produces godly servants or workers. And uh, if you go to the book of Luke chapter 17, you see uh, what Jesus said. Eh? Uh, Luke 17, uh, verse 10. Uh, so likewise, uh, you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. What does this mean? That when you have done what has been assigned to you, you take it that uh, you have just done what you needed to do. Uh, don't expect eh, uh, that uh, you must receive something out of it. Don't expect appreciation. And uh, indeed, in the workplace, one of the biggest problems that uh, we are suffering from is uh, the workers just wanting to be appreciated for every small thing. Every small thing they do, they want to be appreciated. But if the workers would have that mentality, uh, I've just done what my duty to do. So even when you get the appreciation or not, you will still happy. You are not there to be appreciated, uh, but you are there to work for God. And that's why uh, in the book of Col uh, Colossians, uh, chapter 3 and verse 23, uh, uh, we are told, Colossians 3, 23, whatever you do, work from your soul. You know, put your very best effort as something done for the Lord not uh, for men. So you work unto the Lord. So even when you work and you work that hard, you are not working to be appreciated. You are working for God. Uh, you are doing it for the Lord. And it is from him that you will receive the reward. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to finish uh, by the fourth one, which is that uh, uh, disregarding entitlement uh, brings salvation. It is the way of salvation. And uh, uh, one of the most difficult things that uh, 
uh, is there in ministry is preaching to a people who have been taught works. They feel they need to do this in order to uh, get the blessing of God. And uh, so for them, they think that also for salvation, there's something they need to do. And that's why some people feel something dramatic needs to happen because uh, maybe I need uh, to go and pray for three days so that I can get born again, you know. But uh, uh, all the blessings of God are given to us as gifts. They are not entitlements, yeah. The works, whatever we do, will not take us to heaven. Uh, if you come to church every Sunday, uh, don't expect that uh, you will go to meet the Father because of that, the work that you have done. Unless you have by faith received the Lord Jesus Christ, all that you do, all those works, count for nothing. They count for nothing. Our own righteousness is like fill the lags before the eyes of God. And uh, uh, even when you look at uh, the time before the law, that is before Moses, even our father of faith and uh, our elder brother preached in the first service about uh, faith. Uh, our, the father of faith, Abraham, uh, we are told that Abraham believed in God and it was created to his account as righteousness. It is the faith in God, not what he did. So even before the law, uh, the, uh, being righteous before God was not as a result of the work that we do. It is as a result uh, of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or in God. Our right standing in God will not come because of what we have done, but because of what Christ Jesus has done. Uh, as we appreciate what he has done on the cross uh, for us, uh, as we appreciate that he is the son of God uh, who came in the human form to this world, and uh, died on the cross for our sins. That is how we receive salvation. It is not because of what we do. And so if you are here and uh, uh, you have not met with the Lord Jesus Christ, all you need to do is to appreciate the work of the cross, appreciate the work of Calvary, accept it, uh, confess it, with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you will be saved. It is not by works. It is not what we have done. It, there is no entitlement that we have uh, to be born again or to become uh, sons and heirs uh, together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it is just because of faith. It is by grace that we are saved and it is not by works. So I want us to go before God and uh, uh, to thank him. Uh, he is telling us to give him thanks for each and every situation, for it is uh, his will concerning us. He is telling us that uh, we should not uh, have an entitlement mentality, but uh, we should uh, appreciate that all that we have comes from the hearts of God that uh, 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 blessings and favor come from God. It doesn't come from what we have done. And so if there are areas where you have been feeling you are entitled, and uh, as you have been feeling entitled, you have been uh, uh, feeling uncomfortable because you are not getting whatever you think you deserve, now, release it to God. Tell God, I'm not entitled to this. Uh, it is just uh, by your grace that I receive whatever I receive. And so I'll give you thanks. Even if I don't receive this, I'll give you thanks because this is your will concerning me. Let's go before God in prayer. Mighty and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, 
we give you thanks and we give you praise for what you are to us and what uh, you have done for us. Indeed, we give you thanks because we are here because of you. We give you thanks that uh, we are saved not because of anything that we have done, but it is by your grace that we have been saved. It is because of the work that you did on the cross uh, that uh, we are saved, uh, that we have an inheritance in you, O oh God. We thank you, Master, even for all that you have done for us. Uh, and Master, there are many a times uh, as we relate with people, as we relate even to you, O oh God, we have felt a sense of entitlement. We have felt that we deserve uh, to get uh, particular rights, uh, particular privileges, and particular benefits, even though we do not deserve. Even when uh, uh, we have worked, uh, uh, Father, it is uh, from your hand that everything comes from, O oh God. You are even the one who gives us the power to make wealth. And so, Father, as we are before you this morning, we pray that you forgive us uh, for where entitlement has drawn us away from you, O oh God. Where entitlement has drawn us away from your blessing. And where entitlement has prevented us, O oh King of glory, from relating with people appropriately, O oh King of glory. Lord, even where entitlement has made us not to be the readers that you want us to be, where entitlement, O oh King of glory, has also not made us uh, to be the workers that we need to be. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are before you, and we are praying, O oh Father, that you help us uh, to be transformed uh, by the renewing of our minds, uh, that we may know that which is your good, perfect, and acceptable will, O oh God, and we will do it, O oh King of glory. And your perfect will is that we give you thanks uh, and praise for each and every situation, because it is your will concerning us. Uh, the Lord God Almighty will never Never take anything for granted. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we will remember to give you thanks and praise, even for the very small thing, even for getting uh, salaries uh, put in our banks uh, or paid to our Mpesa account or as cash, uh, even when we sell things, when we provide service uh, and uh, uh, we get a payment, uh, we will remember to give you things uh, that we will repraise uh, this mentality of entitlement with the uh, mentality and the spirit of thanksgiving to God uh, who is the source of everything. And so we give you praise and we give you glory and we pray that you read us and guide us uh, that we will live lives that are acceptable to you. We give you thanks and we give you praise because we prayed, trusting, and believing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And everybody says, Amen. amen. Let's give a mighty hard clap to God. Amen, 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 amen. May the Lord bless you. A powerful word this afternoon. And indeed, if you are expectant, you have received. And I want to thank God for ministering to us at our points of need. And because I know each and every one of us has had this issue of entitlement. I deserve this. It's my right. And so God has helped us to know that we need to cultivate the heart of giving, of saying thank you to the Lord instead of saying, I have this right. Thank you very much, Aldagishuru, for being used of the Lord to help us in this. We now want to come to another session of giving to the Lord. It's a form of saying thank you to the Lord for what he has done. So we want to give and I want to thank God that we have all these means of uh, getting the word rich to the world. Those of, uh, of us who are watching us on television or Revival TV, on our online platforms. We welcome you to this session also. You can give uh, using our pay bill, our M-Pesa number, and those numbers are rolling through your, down your screen there. So you can use eight of them to give your offering and tithes. So we thank the Lord for those of us who are here. We are 
going to give physically. We have these offering bags that have been put here. We are going to come and give. But before we do that, I want us to pray. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we give all the honor and praise unto you. We thank you, King of Glory, for this opportunity that you've given unto us to say thank you because of the many things that you've done, for the many things you've given unto us, for the many favors that you have given us, O oh Lord, as your children. Lord, we want to say thank you by giving our offering, O oh God, to you, and even, O oh God, to pay our tithes, O oh God. Receive them, O oh my master, even as we give, and even those who are giving uh, using the, the, the soft media, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you bless us all, O oh God. We thank you. And we give all the honor and praise unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.